According to Hameroth, our souls are built from something much more fundamental than neurons. They are constructed from the very fabric of the universe. I think that consciousness, or its immediate precursor, we'll call it proto-consciousness, has been in the universe all along, perhaps from the Big Bang. All of this recalls the Buddhist and Hindu belief that consciousness is an integral part of the universe, and perhaps it is all there is in the universe. If consciousness is a quantum process, it may solve the mystery of what happens during near-death experiences. Let's say the heart stops beating, the blood stops flowing, the microtubules lose their quantum state. But the quantum information, which is in the microtubules, isn't destroyed, it can't be destroyed, it just distributes and dissipates to the universe at large. If the patient is resuscitated, revived, this quantum information can go back into the microtubules and the patient says, I had a near-death experience. I saw a white light, I saw a tunnel, I saw my dead relatives, I maybe even floated out of my body. Now, if they're not revived and the patient dies, then it's possible that this quantum information can exist outside the body, perhaps indefinitely as a soul. Many scientists find it difficult to believe that the soul is a quantum computer hardwired into the cosmos. But Hameroff feels that research is slowly validating his claims. Quantum effects have recently been shown to control several important biological processes, from bird navigation to photosynthesis to the human sense of smell. So far, nobody has landed a serious blow to the theory. We're still very viable, and evidence continues, uh, new evidence continues to support the ideas that we put forth 15 years ago. But the truth is, we still don't know where consciousness comes from or where it goes when we die. If there was a way to measure consciousness, perhaps we could find the answers to these questions. Most physicists will tell you where the particle ends up is just a roll of the dice. But there's another theory. My conscious mind could be controlling this subatomic world. And the sixth sense could be what makes the universe tick. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physicist. As a pioneer of string theory, which proposes the world is actually nine-dimensional, he believes scientists need to keep an open mind about the sixth sense, no matter how strange it may sound. We physicists are conservative revolutionaries in the sense that we have to be open to all sorts of crazy, bizarre phenomena. Who would have thought that there's something called radioactivity? Who would have thought that we would have quantum forces? So we have to be open to these things. The most successful physical theory of all time is called quantum mechanics, the theory of the atom, because it's based on the idea of probabilities, that you don't really know where an electron is, and electrons can exist in some sense in multiple states at the same time. The fuzzy nature of subatomic particles might just provide a way to explain the sixth sense. Erwin Schrodinger, one of the founders of quantum mechanics designed a thought experiment to drive home the strange rules of his theory. Let's say we put a cat and a vial of poison in a box. We add an atom of radioactive uranium and a Geiger counter. If the uranium decays, it sets off the Geiger counter, which then releases the poison and silently kills the cat. Before we open the box and look, we can't actually know whether the uranium has decayed or not, since radioactive decay is a probabilistic quantum event. Here's the question. Is the cat dead or alive? Well, according to quantum mechanics, the cat is neither dead nor alive, but the sum of the two states. Well, at that point, you say, well, that's nonsense. That's preposterous. How can you be both dead and alive simultaneously? 
Schrodinger's cat was supposed to show that nothing in this universe is certain until someone makes a measurement. But another pioneer of quantum mechanics, Eugene Wigner, believed it could teach us something else about the working of the universe. That consciousness controls everything. Wigner said, let's take it one step farther. If I, a human being, looks at the cat, I am conscious. Therefore, consciousness determines existence. At that point, Einstein went ballistic and said, what? You're saying that the fact that you are a conscious being determines the fact that the cat is alive? The answer is yes. And Wigner made one more step. And that is, how do I know I'm alive? You see, the cat and me, we're part of the same universe. If I don't know the cat is alive or dead, I could also be dead at the same time and not even know it. So who determines that I'm alive? Well, Wigner's friend looks at me, I look at the cat, and we exist. But then who looks at Wigner's friend? And there's an infinite chain of people looking at people, looking at people, until finally you hit cosmic consciousness. Some consciousness that's ethereal, that envelops the universe, which looks at us and says, aha, the cat is alive. Wigner believed that consciousness is an inextricable part of reality, that nothing really happens in the physical world unless a conscious mind observes it.